Let me guess. Something's wrong with your Kia slash Hyundai also. And you're thinking, I hope this is simple. It's really simple. We're talking about a crank sensor. Super, super simple repair. Anybody could actually do it. it. Takes about 10 minutes, a 10 millimeter ratchet. No big deal. Let me tell you what was going on with our car because this may resonate with you. Our number one issue we were dealing with on this particular vehicle is it would buck. So you would driving down the road and and then it'd go right back to normal. It would rev up as high as you wanted it to, but somewhere around 26, 2800. I mean, hard kick down. Now, what was interesting about that was not only did it kick down, but it would give these temporary flashes of check engine light. Now, that may seem like possibly an ignition coil or you know some other random misfire. I get back and I start testing it and testing it and testing it. And I realize on the next test drive, it falls flat, it loses RPM gauge. As soon as it does that, I immediately know my quest is over, the heavens open up, and the answer is given. We are dealing with a crank sensor, crank positioning sensor. Now this is the sensor on the bottom. A lot of cars use the cams. Some have one or two cam sensors and a crank sensor. They're very similar. They're basically magnetically counting what the revolutions are and telling the computer where it's at. Is there any other symptoms besides this? Mine was so obvious and so harsh, but there is other symptoms out there that happen with this crank sensor. So don't, don't dismiss those as not important your car becomes harder and harder to start you may or may not get an rpm gauge signal but if you don't get an rpm gauge signal that's pretty much guaranteed you've got a bad crank sensor pretty much not saying there can't be a problem with the line but let's pretend everything's working fine and then it isn't now the next thing that i would think is kind of relevant that can happen is you may be driving along your car die and you're like man what the heck is going on here and then you turn around and a little while later the car cools off starts back up and dries fine all right so that's also a sign of a crank sensor so what could happen if we don't take care of this i guess that's really the important number one i think would just be being stuck in traffic to me that's the major danger here you're on a busy interstate or you're trying to get off somewhere or you're in the middle lane in downtown traffic somewhere wherever you live and all of a sudden the car just decides to die well, now your $30 part costs you a tow bill, plus embarrassment, plus you're late for whatever you're doing. And it's a whole lot of just, uh, we don't want to deal with it. So it's a safety issue based on its, its inability for you to guess when it's going to go bad. So that would be my first reason I would change it. Second, it's going to be gas mileage. Like, it just, uh, when you don't have the correct uh, timing on stuff and the computer isn't working right, even like this one's intermittent, it may dump fuel or it may cut fuel off. So you may get a rich or lean, just depends. But either way, it's just not optimized. So we've got a gas mileage issue, we have a danger issue. And then there is, well, can it hurt the car? Yes, it can, and why? Anytime you have a misfire, and all a misfire is, is saying that the gas exploded at the wrong time and wrong place. Okay, on an internal combustion engine, that's a bad thing. You don't want the gas to combust ahead of time, and you don't want the, combat, the gas to combust too late. So, you know, when it's, when it's on its top and it explodes, that's the most impact you're going to get down. So when it explodes and it's, say, on its way down before it... it, it uh, designates i mean before it detonates designates designated as an explosion before it detonates then you're going to lose power and you know all those misfires causes it, it just starts you down a path you probably don't want to go so bullet point would be intermittent stalling difficult starting check engine light also misfires rough idling reduced fuel efficiency 
And like I said, just a pure embarrassment of just being broke down in the middle and looking like a quite a desperate individual trying to push your car in the middle of the road. We've all been, car people, we've all been there. But maybe you're not one of us and you don't want to be in that group. Regardless of whatever it is, it's easy to fix. I'm getting ready to, to tack the other part of this on here. But literally, it's one 10 millimeter ball. It slides out. That's what happens. That's how you fix it. And this, by doing it yourself, should save you two or three hundred bucks. And not saying a shop's going to try to rip you off and make it seven or eight hundred and find five other things that ain't even wrong with your car, or misdiagnose it to start with and cost you another thousand dollars. But maybe with this video, especially with the way the economy is, maybe you can just figure it out yourself, and maybe you can just get the ten millimeter bolt out and call it a day. Give the car man a like, a sub. And by the way, let's start a hashtag on this in case people have problems because I'm interested if anybody's got any other symptoms. And if you do have a symptom or have had a symptom of a bad crank sensor, do me a favor. Put that crank sensor symptom on the bottom because there's people that are going to scroll through this that are going to be like, dang, this happened to my car. And it, I believe me, I can't remember everything. So if something happened to your car that I didn't go over just now, throw it in there, maybe share a little bit of information about it, just so this kind of helps. The next thing I would do is the battery. There's two benefits to disconnecting the battery. The first, we will not risk any type of short back to the ECU, which is the real danger of doing anything electrical that can cause a short. Okay, and they're very sensitive. The second thing that we can do that's actually a benefit by doing this is it resets the computer. Actually, take a second to hold the negative and positive cables together for just a few seconds, and that'll do what we call a hard reset. The first step that we need to really get into this to make sure you and I are on the same page, actually you are, there's only a couple details, and underneath the car, it really is just a matter of taking this 10 millimeter bolt out it's easier to show you upside. I'll, I'll give you the location, but this is how you take it out. So when it's out, you're gonna wiggle it. You gotta do the wiggle, wiggle, the jiggle, jiggle. But that's how you do it. You're gonna kind of break it free because it gets stuck. You see that rubber? So we're just trying to, we're just trying to get it free there and that's it. And when you go to put it back in, put a little bit of oil around that ring. That's what I do anyway. And it keeps it from tearing when it goes back in. As far as when you tap it back in, as you can see at the end of it, that's the magnet. This is probably what's defective on the other one. Something going on behind that magnet there. And then as far as the plug-in, which again, really hard to see when you're under there, but I'll, let me give you this update before I show you the location. This slides on and off. And if you look, it's designed to be slid on from the top. So you, you come up to the top and push it down, or to take it off, you pull it up. The electrical plug, it's got this little snap on the back, so it's just a little two-prong deal that you just pop up and comes over. Super easy. It might be on this side. Now I'm looking at it, it probably is on this side. Either one, whichever side it's on, you just clip it off and slide it off, and that's it. You see, it's just getting the pulse right there. It's just got the two things. And whenever it interrupts, it just sends that signal. You know, like them sound effects. Um, and that's what's giving us our RPM gauge and telling everybody that the world is happy and it's all good. But that's it. In my case, this is $32. Amazon's got them. You know, there's an argument to be said. You could go OEM from the dealer. Probably still not that expensive. Honestly, if I was going to go a retail box store, I'd probably just go Amazon because I'm pretty sure it's all the same Chinese stuff. Unless somebody was advertising something different. But if it's a Chinese knockoff, then I'd probably just jump on the Amazon cart because they, they charge almost double. I think this was 70, 80 bucks at O'Reilly's ish somewhere. And that's with our discounts. Still wasn't a great deal. I can't remember exactly to the penny, but it wasn't. And I ended up just getting it from Bap Gion, who's an import guy. They happen to have it in stock. I picked it up for 32 bucks or something like that. That's about what you can get them for on Amazon. Maybe a buck or two cheaper. Who knows? But anyway, all that. Do what you want to do on that situation. But super simple fix. 
Like I said, the most complicated part about this is deciding why it's happening and if this is actually the problem. All right, let's go down here and take a look at the location. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is locate it. And as you can see, we have the oil filter in view. And if you turn towards the driver's side very slowly, I think my camera's doing it. And now the first cable you run across, you see the one missing the 10 millimeter bolt. I've already taken it out. It's just a 10 millimeter. I just want to show you how easy the access is. This is the only bolt, in fact, that you will actually remove. And then you wiggle it and jiggle it a little bit, not too much pressure, and she pops out. And of course, it's reverse of the removal to do the installation. And there's really not much to it. This is basically it. And so this video was really about making sure this was the right sensor for you to take out because of all the signs that it gave us to indicate that this was the crank sensor. Now, if there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out. As always, a car man's got your back. Let's save a few dollars. Try it yourself. And if nothing else, you'll be a better person. You'll, you'll be the next one doing the video. And by all means, I don't know how you, this could be any easier than taking one bolt out and replacing it. But if you could do it any easier, please feel free to share. And uh, we, of course, welcome anybody that can do things faster and better. Or if you have a problem that we didn't cover or a different symptom that we didn't cover, please definitely drop that in the comments. That way everybody can kind of get the uh, use out of this video and kind of and do the deal when they look down below so they can come up with a few answers for the questions. Meanwhile, peace and love from the car, man.